60s child. Airfix kits are sold all over the world, but how did it all start? In 1939, Airfix founder Nicholas Cove, a refugee from Hungary, set up a company producing inflatable latex toys. But with World War II spreading into the Far East where the supply of latex came from, the supply of materials became scarce. So he switched to early plastics made from acetate. And after the war ended, he was one of the first British companies to use injection moulding. The company started to produce plastic combs. In 1949, the company was approached by Harry Ferguson, you know, Ferguson tractors, and was asked to produce a model of their tractor that their salespeople could use as a promotional aid. They were having problems producing this as one piece, so what they did was make individual pieces. Workers would assemble the pieces, box them up, and send them off to Ferguson. This little plastic tractor became very popular and Ferguson allowed Airfix to sell it under the Airfix brand name. The company soon realised if they lowered the selling price they could sell even more of these tractors. So they started selling them as a kit with instructions on how to put them together and they were an enormous success. And soon after that Woolworths came knocking on the door of Airfix. They suggested to Airfix that they use a stronger plastic or more sturdy plastic. And in 1952, the Golden Hind model kit started selling in Woolworths. Costing two shillings, this was considered by many as the very first model kit. And it launched Airfix well and truly into the world of toys. Through the 60s and 70s, Airfix continued to expand, as did the range of models available. The hobby of making models became extremely popular and Airfix was on an all time high. We all had our favourite aeroplanes we could build. And remember how you laughed in the playground when your mate told you he's building a fucker. <laughs> Airfix also produced slot car racing tracks. I never owned one but they looked pretty cool. However I did own a few of these models. The Airfix historical figures range. As always, the details were fantastic. This Boy Scout one is pretty rare today. There was even a range of models for James Bond fans. I still remember the pleasure I got from owning this little beauty. I can honestly say I can't remember seeing this ad in any comic because I'd have certainly sent away for Stingray. And later on Space 1999 got the treatment. Who can forget the Airfix soldiers? I particularly like the football ones. I've already got a video on my channel about Airfix soldiers so I won't go into too much about these. There was a fantastic range of seagoing vessels historical ships and even car ferries and speaking of ferries my brother owned this the hovercraft what a fantastic model that was it had a clear plastic roof so you could see the detail inside and their ads in our comics would keep us informed of all the latest stuff there was even an airfix modelers club with dick emery they also produced their own range of model railway kits and engines many of which are still produced today and they didn't just produce model kits, they produced toys as well, like this super flight deck. Basically a model aeroplane on strings that you flew with a stick. What about these little devils, the weevils? They had their own caravans, houses, parks, you name it, they had it. They even had a haunted house. The Datamatic car, high tech for the 70s. But these were the favourites of mine. The toy guns they produced. this Lego type building set, Better Builder, and loads of arts and crafts stuff. We can't go on any further without mentioning the artwork on the boxes, how stunning that was done by some of the best artists in the business. 
the artwork on the box certainly did help sell the product and to this day they're still collected. Sadly by the early 80s Airfix went into administration and was quickly bought up by Palatoy, you know the makers of Action Man. Although this only lasted for a few years and in the late 80s Airfix was acquired by Humbro who had a huge factory in Hull in the UK. However the model kits were still produced in France. Sadly by 2006 they also had gone bust and the factory lay derelict for years. Just outside the factory there was on a plinth a Hawker Hunter aircraft and this once mighty machine fell prey to the vandals. But thanks to some enthusiasts the plane now resides at a place called Fort Paul in Yorkshire which is a Napoleonic fort. This wasn't the end for Airfix though because they were bought out by Hornby in 2006 after Humbro went bust and the model kits are still being produced. I, like many 60s boys, have very fond memories of building Airfix kits. Let me know in the comments which kits you liked. Did you hang them from the ceiling like this? Or were you more organised and put them on shelves? Whichever way you chose to display them, let me know in the comments. For the final section of this video, let's have a look at the Airfix catalogue. The very first issue was released in 1962 and cost 9 pence. And there's been one released every year since. And to finish up the video, here is the whole catalogue of 1971. Enjoy.